today we're going to study who was Lamech, generation 9, one of the patriarchs in the Hebrew record. He was the father of Noah. Now this is Lamech, generation 9 of the line of Seth, instead of Lamech, generation 7 of the line of Cain. But in Genesis 5 we read, And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years, and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years, and begat a son, and called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years, and he died. So we can look here into the periodic table of history. Let's zoom up onto, onto Lamech. We know that Shem, Ham, and Japheth are right here. So their father is Noah, right here. And Noah's father is Lamech right here. So we can change the color so that we can see this a little bit better and understand who we're talking about. Change him to yellow. So Lamech is now yellow. His life bar is yellow. And we can look at the uh, his father, Methuselah, right up here. 969-year lifespan, the longest, oldest person in biblical history. Methuselah. So he has the son Lamech right here. Lamech has son Noah right here. And so we're looking at this window of history. This primary text gives us the names, chronology, and dates, so it allows us to place Lamech in the scheme of time and links it with modern history through Abraham and the founding of the Temple of Solomon. Because we we know that Abraham is about right here. We know that the founding of the Temple of Jerusalem is about right here. We can go all the way down to modern history of Israel down in this area. And we get a glimpse of the state of life in the pre-flood world in Genesis 5:29. Lamech seems beaten down and so had to deal with the cursed ground, the toil, the work, and then the hope that perhaps Noah will be the breakthrough child that will relinquish the curse. That's the curse of even Adam. And then, of course, God promises that a seed will crush the serpent. So all the people are looking for the descendant that is going to defeat the adversary. And Lamech here is hoping Noah is that hope. If we use the Hebrew Masoretic text, Noah is born to Lamech. 1056 years after Adam, and the ground is still difficult to work. So in the book of Jasher, 1840, chapter 412, it says, And at that time the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. So we can perceive that God's word to Adam is true in how he set up natural and spiritual law. God created everything well, and the result of breaking the boundary of God is a state that is worse than before. We find that Lamech is longing for less toil, and we should think of this when we are tempted to break the natural and spiritual boundaries that God set up. We can go on in the book of Jasher 4.11, and we learn the name of Lamech's wife is Ashmua. That's spelled A-S-H-M-U-A, the daughter of Elisha, and that's spelled E-L-I-S-H-A-A, -A, who was the son of Enoch. So we don't get those names from the Hebrew record, but we get them from the book of Jasher. And remember, the book of Jasher was not canonized, but is mentioned in Joshua and 2 Samuel. And we can take a look at this life bar. It's, it's rather intriguing that we can see uh, Noah and then Shem, Ham, and Japheth right here. So the lifespan of Lamech starts and ends here. 
just right before the flood happened. And we can see that Lamech is still alive over here when Adam is still alive over here. So there was time for all the patriarchs, Adam all the way up to Lamech, to teach Lamech the, the ways of history, the, the ways of God, the ways of the beginning, the stories. And that would have been encyclopedic for Lamech. Now the only other scripture that we have about Lamech is we have the, the classic uh, First Chronicles 1 Chronicles 1.3 mentions Lamech as one of the patriarchs. Then we have Dr. Luke's account, Luke 3.36. Uh, it was giving the natural authenticity of, of Jesus, having been descent from Abraham, having being descent from Noah and Adam. The Lamech lived 777 years, so 777 found its way to be a fortunate number. I don't like to use the word lucky since it is associated with the god of chance called luck, but chance and the god luck are exalted in casinos and 777 is a lucky number on the slot machines. Josephus also speaks in the Antiquities about Lamech and says that Lamech appointed Noah, his son, to be ruler over the people. Uh, so we start getting this idea that Noah as some type of ruler, king. Uh, you don't really get that idea from the Bible, but more that he's just a person that's in the righteous line of Adam. So, so again, that's from the book of, of Josephus and Antiquities of the Jews. If we go outside of all of these forces, we, we can zoom out and start just to look at the scale of history, and we can see right in this region the the Sumerian kings list, and we start to just see a few other tips of, of other cultures, China, Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, and then if we go down to, to the, the Egyptian side, we, we see some people cropping up here from Egypt in this region, which Lamech would have been alive. When we're over here on the Samaritan's kings list, we can see the last king before the flood was Yubara Tutu, last king mentioned, because right after that we get the inscription that uh, after the flood had swept over and the kingship had descended from heaven, the kingship was in Kish. So this name Yubara Tutu is associated with Methuselah because the father of Yubara Tutu in Mianduarana is thought to be a type of Enoch who was taken and didn't see death. And so then if you, if you transfer that information over here, don't worry about whether things are uh, absolutely certain or anything like that, uh, because uh, historians don't really know everything about this time period. So, but, but we just go with the order then that um, if they were talking about Methuselah as Ubaratutu, uh, as the last king before the flood, we also see um, Lamech's father right here, Methuselah. And if you'll notice, just looking at this graph, we can see Methuselah outlives Lamech, not by very much, but you can see that you can see that uh, Methuselah dies here and Lamech dies here. So Methuselah could be considered the last king in the old world, and then uh, we could consider Noah also that, but everybody gets wiped out at that point because after Lamech dies, then Methuselah dies, and then the flood happened. And the only people left are Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives, the eight people that lived, and that's due to the flood happening right here. So any other king in the pre-flood world would not be relevant after that point. So I just find getting the perspective on this is extraordinarily fascinating, and like I just mentioned, we do start getting into just a little bit of non-Hebrew history where we see China coming into play, Myanmar, Vietnam, 
and then we even start getting into uh, Babylon, Persia, Assyria, that type arena, and the Greeks and, and Ireland come just a little bit later. So history starts to get fascinating when we start getting up into to this point. So hopefully that gives you a lot of perspective on the scope of history and the Hebrew history, the scope of biblical history and how it intersects into, into modern history. So uh, here we'll just zoom out and, and show you the whole scope of history. And like I said, modern history, we can see Israel down here. Chaim Wiesman in 1948 became the first modern president as Israel became a nation. And all of that's tied back into the Hebrew history, back into this ancient time. And this whole periodic table of history gives us that scope that we only live once. And we only have the time we're given to do what we're supposed to be doing. So hopefully this inspires you to do the best that you can do. And if you were informed or if you like this video, uh, be sure to thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. So thanks for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.